Hello right, folks, how are we doing? Got the sprayer on, well the row crop tractor, goes on the little 60-20 when the crops get, uh, you know, uh, high enough that we're on the big tractor with the big tyres, it would um, squish it so we swapped to this tractor, she's on a little, um, what's she on? Uh, she is on 460s, so they're narrow enough to pass as um, row crops, so uh, yeah, she's on there at the minute. A little load of tractor, she's migrated to the feeder wagon. Obviously, because that would, would have been doing it, because uh, we don't need the chopper anymore. Um, so yeah, it's all going. Today we are mucking out one of the cow sheds, because uh, they're, uh, they're all on the way out to fields they are now. So we've got very few, we've got the calves in which are next door. We've got um, bullies in. Uh, and he's got half a dozen heifers and a cow with him because kept one of the cows is um, only a month away from harvest, so she'll probably stay in. That'll be um, only be another load of this. In this barn, so I'm going to tip this. That's a good grab for ways. Good, good grab for. Holy, holy! <laughs> this shows you what the old Agri Pro's cable of. She is a hoss. We're certainly making use of that 4.2 ton um, capacity then. Oh, well, we'll. Uh, We'll go and take that in. The cows are out the front again. They're actually sort of mowing this down quite well now. But there's plenty of grass out the back that they've got to get on top of. But as, um, you know, it started growing, you know, it is growing, but how long it'll keep growing because, I mean, we haven't had any rain for, I'm trying to think now, two weeks, maybe three weeks. There's nothing on the um, uh, there's nothing on the forecast. Nothing of any you know they give scattered showers today, but scattered showers you know wouldn't be enough. You know it's getting to the stage where we need a good uh, need a good rain. Well, I've just got to go and shut the gear. Otherwise, you know where this lot will be time to get back. All over the blooming shop. Yeah, fairish load that is. Which has just nipped off down the um, down the field because need to heap up before we uh, um, for a tip anyway. Cause it's in room, so there's our fast track. You see her? And yes, you see what. Um, you can see what I see. She's all painted up, all done, ready. Don't she look smart? Now, um, I'm not 100% sure whether this this video will probably go out actually before I do the final um, final front linkage video. Because I'm just waiting on something to go on the front as well. So um, um, it hasn't turned up yet. So this video will probably go out before the final front linkage video. Uh, and it'd be good to get that done because it's been going on for, oh, when did I start? Christmas time, something like that. So I've already got some admirers come see me. What are you lot doing? Hey, you keeping an eye on us? Yes. Have you got the nose? <laughs> Right, let's crack on. Now, it'll be interesting. Um, yeah, we haven't run, run over any cows. Uh, it'll be interesting um, what the gearbox is like in um, in here now because um, uh, Sam from Russell's was here ooh, three weeks ago, four weeks ago. Done service on the tractors and. He calibrated, well actually this needed a couple of sensors on the gearbox doing. 
um, which is why the the clutch and some of the gear change especially the range change 12 to 13th was harsh a lot when they you know trying to maneuver smoothly with the clutch um well that was nice and smooth that was um it you couldn't really do it very well it, it, it would sort of go in with a bit of a clonk then you'd have a bit of play to slip it like but um yeah that's a lot better and he, obviously he's you know he's fitted them sensors to calibrate so let's go back down to 12th oh much smoother much 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 better And it wouldn't work in auto either. I mean, I I prefer to run it in manual. Um, but um, my father-in-law, he, he just clicks it in auto and lets it go up and down. And it wouldn't. It would sometimes be out of auto by the end of the street. So um, not ideal. But that's a lot smoother now. That will be, um, you know, that'll be a lot better. A lot better. Oh, beans are looking alright, aren't they? A bit, little bit patchy down this head, and it always lays tough down this head, but um, the rest of the field looks good, doesn't it? Got some wheat there. That looks alright at all. Just like I say, everything could do with a bit of a drink. Engine's having a good push up for us. front linkage isn't it that's so been ages since there uh, that's blue one is oh that's tip rounds tip and yeah that's door been a while since i've well, a long time since i've driven it oh we can go in now for all the advice on um, well you tell her I ain't driven it because it needs topping up with back end oil dear oh dear um, for all the advice on the uh, what was it the fencing video when I asked about if you were using bib loads um, Obviously, uh, the idea will be um, to not use biblos because, <laughs> by the sounds of it, um, uh, they are, you know, from a lot of your experiences, they're not very good at all on this sort of ground. You know, if this was wet, though, you know, you, you might as well have slicks on. You're better off with part worn. Um, that's all good. Better off with part worn ag um, cleated tyres than biblos or anything similar. So, um, so thanks for answering that. That has uh, definitely answered that question for us.
Oh, I'll drop the old door back down. Like so. We'll leave Richard pushing that up. He'll push up the one um, we've just tipped as well, so we'll be able to tip another three here. And uh, get this head back. And away we go. Yeah, that transmission is so much smoother now. Yes, um, that's needed that uh, for a long time. A lot, lot smoother. <clears throat> for those of you wondering how my ankle's getting on, it is, I would say, at probably about 99% now. Um, yeah, it doesn't give me any any jip now, really, even if it's, um, you know, even if I'm all on sort of uneven ground or whatever. But uh, that doesn't mean to say that I'm not careful. Obviously, I'm very careful with it now and protect it as much as I can, you know, and all, you know, I really sort of concentrate on where I'm walking, that sort of thing. Seems silly, but it's what you have to do. And I'm, you know, my lovely, nice, clean, well, brand new DeWalt boots that are about a month old are fil <laughs> filthy, aren't they? Because they aren't more wellies. Um, but they are doing the trick. You know, lace up, they go above the ankle, hold it all together. So um, they're all ideal. Well, I'm just going to restart the T7 and she's dead. She's just clicking. Only got 10.9 volts in the battery and she has been a bit lazy starting. And she but. Something like that. Yeah. So I've got the old Noco Boost HD out. This is a fantastic bit of kit, this is. I was always dubious about them, but it's got no end of juice in it. Run that on there. And you just press the power. And it should go like that. And then we should have some power now. So we've obviously got a duff battery, I think, because we did it um, a couple of weeks ago. So we should be, um, should be fine now. Yeah, 11.5 volts. There you go. That's a bloody good bit of kit, that is. Bloody good bit of kit. But I'll tell you, it was just clicking. Dig, 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 because I've left the flashing light on for 10 minutes. Um, them Noppo Power Boost starter thingies are well worth having in your toolbox. Anyway, it's definitely the battery, because you see the dash is saying 13.6 volts, so it's, it's not an issue with charging. I mean, it's no doubt that, I mean, the battery's probably been on there, you know, yeah, it would be the original battery. Puts it at five years old, so it's not that old really, but that's obviously where the the issue lies anyway. But um, yeah, then I was always dubious because they're so small. Because they're lithium ion batteries, you know, they're you know sort of modern battery tech, and uh, I think it's 2000 amp, it's it's got no end of go in it. Um, and you know, we, you know, we just we jumped this. I've actually jumped this twice now, and not recharged it, and it still says it's full. I mean, they are fantastic bits of kit. You get a light on it as well, and you can charge your phone off it as well. So it's, I mean, it's a versatile bit of kit. That's weird. Tip this second load. I haven't filled the back end up with any oil, and uh, I've literally tipped the trailer right up and. Um, not not hunting for oil at all. So I don't know what it was doing um, on that first load. I'm sure. All right, so the trailer's tipped now, and uh, yeah, there you, go. you see it. That is the oil level there. So she is a little bit low, but I thought that it didn't. You know, there was obviously enough oil in it that time to uh, to tip. Uh, who knows? Who knows? Very per muck. 
Right, it's nearly dinner time. Time to head back. Got some over tractors perth, just having a tidy up. Well, when we get that yard done, um, use this just to, because it's not a totally concrete yard, the loader won't clean it up nicely, but this will. Oh, just push it up the uh, heat now. As you can see, we can only sort of tip three loads. Um, all we need to push up really, otherwise, if you tip more than, you know, if you sort of tip three loads and tip another three, it becomes uh, quite difficult to push all that material up and get it high out of the way. Like, it takes a lot longer anyway. So I was really dubious about these little battery chargers, although this one isn't really a little one. Um, I think it was advertised as like eight litre petrol, six litre or seven litre diesel um, vehicles, you know, what it can start like. Um, but it's really impressed me. I mean, they're not cheap. I mean, that was, uh, what was it? A couple hundred quid. Um, but I mean, yeah, it's started the van a couple of times because the van doesn't charge very well. It started that T7 a couple of times now. And uh, to be honest, yeah, it's always what's in the van or it's, you know, if I'm going away somewhere, it's in the truck. Or, um, so like I say, you've got a little light on it and there's your battery indicator. So apart from initially charging it, I've not charged it up and it started the tractor twice and the van twice, I think. So yeah, good little bit of kit that is. Turn that off. Turn that off. So uh, yeah, I mean, um, what little you know gadgets or tools do you always like to have in your truck or in your van or whatever? Like, um, I mean, I always like to like I say. Um, obviously, I'll have a little socket set. So if I get a spare wheel, you know, if I've got a change of wheel, I can do it. Socket set and a bottle jack. That's what I like to take. And a little air compressor because um, you never know. Like, so uh, but this has been definitely added to the list of things that I chuck in the back when uh, I'm going somewhere so um, yeah let us know what uh, things you like to have with you and uh, I hope you enjoyed that little vid um, bit of mucking out There's, we haven't like I say we really haven't got a lot um, left in in the way of stock now so um, uh, which is good lot you know I means a lot less routine work for us anyway so hope you enjoyed that video I will see you on the next one ta-ta Thank you.